50 millimeter uh, macro lens. So the image that you can see down here is some RAM, just an old RAM stick. And as you can see, the depth of field is really shallow. So whilst this bit here roughly is in focus, this is not. So what focus stacking allows you to do is take a series of photos across the length of this where different bits are in focus as you run along. Um, and in doing that, you can then later on stitch these into a new image. So in a Helicon remote, because I haven't taken any images before, it will save them into this folder down here. Um, if I had, I would probably suggest create new stack folder and that will create a new folder. So at the moment, my camera's in manual mode. Um, just for the purposes of this, this video, I'm gonna put it in aperture priority. Um, but ideally you would do it in manual mode. You would set the parameters so that the image was well exposed. Um, and then you would start your capture. Doing it in manual mode is, is ideal because it then means that you can get a better image. Another trick is that you can just use this to cheat. So actually, why don't we try and do it in manual? So this is telling us that at uh, an f-stop of 16, we would need a time of about four. So we'll go into manual. We'll switch this down to four. And to double check that, if you want, you can just go fast preview. And that will actually capture an image. It's a bit dark. So why don't we try, oh, sorry, that was because I was on one four. Let's go to four. Do another preview again. And let's see how this looks. In theory, it should be much better. Yeah, much better. So the other thing that you could do is you could reduce the aperture. So why don't we drop this down? We'll drop, actually, we'll drop it down a bit. Um, this bit can be a little bit of trial and error. A little bit dark. I'm going to drop this down again. And I might just bring up the ISO just for the purpose of this video. So fast preview again. And we can then see, okay, are we happy with this or are we not? It's a little bit dark, for, but for the purpose of this video, I'm fine with that. So again, because I've saved a lot of photos, I'm just going to create a new stack folder. So because I've saved a lot of photos, I've created a new stack folder. To do that, I just went stack, create new stack folder. And now what we need to do is we need to set the parameters for how we're actually going to set the focus points. So there is a little focus bit down here. If you click that, you'll see it's now gone green. And what that's doing is that's saying that that point is the furthest focus point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on B. And that will lock that as that end focus point. And then you can use these to actually change the focus of the camera lens. So obviously your camera needs to be on automatic focus for this to work. Um, and as I click, you can see that it's, it's changing until that point. That's actually the furthest point on this camera or on the lens that I can focus. So I'm going to lock this point in as well. So what you can see is this would need, based on this aperture, it would need a lot of photos to be fully focused if I use auto. And what this does is this calculates based on uh, an aperture of 10, a focal length of 150, and a correction factor, how many steps are basically needed. So what, what's really handy though, is you can actually change this. So if you change that to 16, you'll see that that number has jumped accordingly. And if you change that to 20, it should jump again, close enough. Um, so what I might do is just for the purpose of this video, rather than doing 53 photos, I'm gonna clear these points and I'm actually going to just focus it more towards the middle. So I'm going to start off here and then I'm going to move this just till I get to the other side of that chip. So I'm happy with that as well. So I've locked my start point and I've locked my end point. If you click on this point here, it'll go to your closest point. If you click on here, it'll go to your furthest point. 
So if you're happy with this, obviously I'm going to have to change the time. I'll just go to aperture and it says I'm going to need about five seconds. So I'll go manual. I'll drop this down to about five. That on five. And so I'm relatively happy with these settings. Now all I need to do is click on start shooting. It will then go to the start point. It'll take a photo. It'll move to each point. And what it's doing is it's going three steps between each point. And so that's the first image that it does. It moves to the next and onwards. So you'll see as I take these photos, that blue mark is moving. That represents where the focus point is for that individual uh, image. And as the camera focus point moves, that will move as well. At the very end, we'll then stack these into um, one combined focus stacked image, which I'll show in another video. So another important thing to note or useful thing to note is what you see down here is the progress. So basically it's saying that we need to capture 18 shots uh, and it's captured a number of photos and it's at about 60%. Uh, focus stack in photo, uh, or when you do focus stack and they can vary depending on the depth of field. Uh, some images may be a stack of tens to hundreds of images, others can be a lot smaller. It does depend on the depth of field, um, which is based on the aperture of what you're using. So that's actually now done all of those photos. It's taken 18 shots and it's put them in this directory. Just a, a really useful tip. It then tells you where it saved them. Um, you can then open them in Helicon Focus if you want. Um, it will bring up a pop-up box um, to say, do you want to open them in Helicon Focus? Or you can just click up here and it will actually open them. I'm not going to do that in this scenario because in another video I'll show you um, exactly how you do it from start to finish. Thanks for watching.